This is Tom Colley for Food Roach Box. I'm at, I'm at the matchroom gym with former two-time interim world champion John Ryder. John, uh, post-retirement, how's things going, mate? It's going good, yeah. I'm busier than ever. I'm at home even less than I was before. So, uh, yes, not much has changed. Taken over the mantle now. Well, not taken over, but joined Tony in the gym, training the fighters, and you've been doing some good rounds with, with Maisie today. How's that been? How's the transition going into training? Yeah, it's been good. It's been a, probably a transition quicker than... I probably did it quicker than I thought I would, and but it's probably worked out good for me. I needed it. I needed something to fill the void of not fighting. And I said, when I'm, I'm sat around doing nothing, I'm my own worst enemy. So it's good for me to be in the gym, be around Tony, learn from him, and be around the, the friends that I've made over the years and, and, and help them out. John, how, how did you come to the decision in the end to, to, to retire? You had a fantastic career, been in there with the absolute best in the game uh, at world level. What made you decide? Because, you know, you still looked sharp when I was a hard fight behind me in gear but you still looked like you know you, you had a lot of fight in you what, what made you decide to make that step and, and, and retire I think it was me, me arse sitting the canvas multiple times in one fight um, listen Hyman Gear was a great fighter um, I knew he'd, he'd do alright against Canelo obviously he didn't win but such so this is a hard game um, I've given him the best years of my life to this game so far I just felt it was time to make the transition it's like it's all very well dropping back down to British level and whatnot, but just it's, I put so much into this game, I need to get something out of it. So it just wasn't going to pay for me to do that. So it's time to make the change. A lot of fighters talk about post-retirement, you know, it's hard to actually step away. You always get that itch to, to come back. So do you think that being involved now in training, that's where you, where you want to go and, and pursue it as a, as a coach sort of moving forward? Yeah, definitely. It fills the void. I mean, I was driving to Sheffield the other week for Jimmy and George and it was like, I should be I should be weighing in tomorrow, I should be fighting. And I got there and like the work mode switch flicked and uh was just there, I was in it and it was a great weekend, two great performances, two great wins. And um yeah, I know where I know where I'm at now. Um I get a lot of pleasure from this, training them, seeing them do things, seeing them progress and uh, that's me for now. I know it's probably probably too soon to say, John, but do you could you see yourself ever getting that itch to come back? Some people, like you know, Carl Froch, he retired, he walked away, and that was it. But I mean, you do see fighters that come back. Do you think that you, you would ever get that itch, or do you think you're just you, you've, you're, you're happy with what you've done now? Yeah, no, there's no no desire to ever fight again, and um, none, none none whatsoever. Did you watch the, the fight on the weekend? Light heavyweight undisputed title, unbelievable uh, contest. Peterbiev, Bivol. Did you get a chance to watch that, John? Yeah, do you know what? I thought. I mean, a lot of people are going to criticise it for being uh, an out-and-out -out boxing match as such, but I just thought it was great. Two of the the best light heavyweights in the world going. The the IQ involved, the the tactics. I thought the result was a bit dodgy, but listen, it was it was a great fight. But I can see why the judges did favour Peterbiev. He was the aggressor. I thought Bivol was was great in that fight on the, on the back foot and, and, and boxing, but it, yes, it was fantastic, and we're going to be lucky enough to see it again, I'm sure. We know Father Time waits for no one, but Terbiev is sort of defying the odds at 39, being able to do what he's he's doing. If we do get that rematch, do you think at some point it's going to catch up with him? Do you think we could see Bivol? I mean, to be honest, it could have gone either way in the first fight anyway. But do you, do you see that age is going to play a part in, in a rematch with Terbiev probably being 40 years old when that comes around? Yeah, I mean potentially, but listen, it's not it's not slowing down just yet. Um, he still looks the the force he is. Obviously, you've seen at the level now with with going up against another champion, he's, he, the power was not carrying through as such. But it was a hard night for both of them. We know uh, uh, the Mark Tibbs gym is not too far from here, and and you guys sort of do, do sparring with each other and training. Um, Johnny Fisher, one of Mark's fighters, just been announced to fight Dave Allen, which I think is an interesting fight if Dave can get himself back in in top shape. Have, have you seen that? And do you think that's a good fight for Johnny at this stage of his career? Yeah, it's a fantastic fight for Johnny. Um, Dave Allen, he's he's listen, he's he's gone away and he's obviously thought about things and he wants to come back. And, and fair play to him, it's, it's a tough game to to turn your back on. Um, so listen, it's a it's a great fight for Johnny. It's a great measuring the stick. Dave's had some great wins in his career um, and fought, some, fought the best, really, isn't he? The Dillian Whites and whatnot. So it's going to be a great measuring stick for Johnny. And, and just finally, John, obviously we've got a massive uh, undisputed fight coming up. Uh, re, re, oh, it's not for the undisputed now, actually. I stand corrected. But the Tyson Fury Alexander Usyk rematch. Um, do you see that, that Fury can, can right the wrong? Can he rewrite the script in that in December? Yeah, I definitely feel he can. I think he um, so I think he got hurt at points in there. Um, I 
I don't think Usyk had enough to put him away, but I think Fury's going to have to do that a bit more this time, have that bit more between his teeth and and really take Usyk out of his stride. But I think listen, Tyson Fury can put anyone at their stride. He's, he's, he's day by day with him. I think if he fancies that day, you'll see the best of him. If he's if he's not feeling himself, then you're not going to see a great performance. But I think you're going to see him put it all on the line that night and, and come away champion. I know it's a final question, John, but it's... it's I would be wrong for me not to ask you in the gym. You've got uh, Connor and a, who I'm sure you're involved in training. Saw what happened and on, on the card with him and Chris Eubank Jr. We've been waiting for that fight for a while. I was talking to Tony earlier and it's probably debatably the biggest fight in, in British boxing alongside Fury and Joshua. Do you think we get that next? And, and if we do, um, how do you see the fight unfolding, John? Um, I hope we get it next. I think it was a shame, obviously, what happened before, what's gone on and what's still going on. But hopefully get that that sorted and and put right. And then hopefully we can get on early next year. Um, I'd favour Connor heavily. I don't think Eubanks... I think Eubanks is well past his best now. Um, like say, father time waits for no one. I think he's... I don't know what it is. I think he looks he looks strange at the weight. He doesn't look like he's refueling after the weight. And he looks like he still looks very, very ripped, very trim. He doesn't like he's got any shine on him. Um, but listen, it takes one punch, doesn't it? And he's still obviously got a bit of power there. Um, but I'd have to favour Connor. He's so young, so explosive. Don't rate that Barnett he's got going on at the moment, but um, I'm sure he'll sort that. But yeah, I, I think I think Connor all day long. Do you think that is there an element that Connor would would need to have a like a tune up fight to get you know shake off some ring rust, or do you think he's ready? You see him in the gym to to just go straight into that fight? No, listen, he's he's in this gym week in week out. Do you know what I mean, if he's not here, if he's abroad he's training he's he's constantly working I think if he needs anything he needs to slow down a bit um, but yeah I think tune-ups are just there to put a spanner in the works aren't they and you end up going in there getting cut then you put that fight back it's just a, a pain in the end so I think he, he could go straight into that fight and, and can't wait victorious yeah John Ryder it's been a pleasure speaking to you and thanks for giving us the time to speak for the ropes cheers mate